In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use Illustrator's basic tools and also create a document. The first thing you want to do is open up Illustrator. So we're going to go to the Applications folder and find our program. We're using CS5 on a Mac for this tutorial. I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm going to create a new document. So what I want to think about is, am I designing for print, for web, for a mobile device, or video? Each of these has different types of sizes. So for example, if we're designing something for a website, it actually gives popular website screens and displays. If we're designing something for mobile devices, it also gives popular mobile device display sizes. In our case, we're designing for print, and at the end, we'll save for web for a web document. The other thing you want to consider is the size of your document. We're going to work in letter size, but there's other choices as well. Units is the type of measurements that you use when you're designing. For print, usually you work in picas or inches. I've never worked in points, and I've never worked in millimeters or centimeters. When I design for the web, you do work in pixels, and that's very popular for web design. So we're going to stick with inches for this project. This is portrait or landscape mode for your paper, and we're working in CMYK since it's for print. One thing I like to do before I begin anything is I like to save my file. So I'm going to go to File, Save, and I'm going to save this on my desktop. I also like to create project folders so that I have everything in one place. I'm going to call it my last name dot logo. I tend to name things all lowercase and I put dots between words. This comes from my days of slugging stories for the web. I'm going to hit create and I'm also going to slug my document and I usually call it the same thing and I'll hit save and then OK. And notice that my document is right here on my desktop inside my folder. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the tools and panels and color as we go along. One of the first things I like to do before even getting started is I like to show my rulers. Rulers are used so that you can use guide rules when you're designing, and I'll show you what I mean. If you go to View, Rulers, Show Rulers, this shows you your rulers on your top and left hand side. Now we can begin. To give you some background on my project, I'm designing a logo for a hypothetical restaurant called Purple Cafe that opens next year. So for my logo, I need to write the words Purple Cafe. To get started, I select the Type tool, which is this T tool on the Tools panel. And then I click and drag a square to write the word Purple. Now, I don't necessarily want to use this font for that word, so I'm going to click on the font and come over here to my characters palette and change the font. Now if your characters palette is not showing up, you can go to window, down to type, and over to character. An Apple T on a Mac will also get you your character panel. And now I'm going to change this to something that's a little bit more legible for the dominant word, which is Georgia. I can change the point size of my word, so I can go as small as 12 point or even smaller than that, but I'm going to leave it at 80. I also like to use the handles on the side of my text box by clicking on the selection tool, and I like to decrease the size of it so that box doesn't get in the way as I'm designing other things. Okay, moving on to the next word. I'm going to draw another text box using my type tool. And if I get too close to the box, it'll draw over, to, over that box and connect it to it. So I really want to get a little further away from that word. And I'm going to write the word cafe. Now I don't want these words to be in the same typeface. So here's where I'll use that script font. I think it was brush. Yeah, that looks good. Now I'm going to select my selection tool and downsize this a little bit as well. So if you get this little red box, that means that there's more to the word or more to the paragraph. 
and you can use your selection tool to drag out the box so that the whole word appears. Now I'll just put place this word next to my purple word. One of the things I like to do, and it makes for good design, is to really line up your letters to other letters or edges. So I want this C to line up with the bottom of this L serif. So I'm going to zoom in using my magnifying glass here. I'm going to zoom in so I can kind of see what I'm doing. Now I'll click my selection tool and on the ruler I'll click and drag a guide rule. Now notice how the guide rule is not showing up. That's because they're hiding. If I go to view, guides, show guides, then my guides will appear and I can move them accordingly. Notice how this one is not budging. So if that's the case, then you can go to view, guides again, and take off lock guides. This way, you can move the guides at will. Now I can move over my cafe by just clicking and dragging. So I'm going to add an icon to my logo to jazz it up a little bit. And to do that, I really want to zoom in so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use the magnifying glass again, or you can do Command Plus or Control Plus on a PC to zoom in. So now I'm zoomed in, and I'll go ahead and create my icon. For a purple cafe, the icon is a purple flower. So first I want to create the petals of my flower. I'm going to come over here to the tool panel and select the shape tool. It may look like this when you first start out, a square. If you click on the little triangle at the end of the tool, that means there's more options and a little flyaway menu will pop up. You can do a rounded rectangle tool with rounded corners, an ellipse tool, or a polygon. I'm going to do the ellipse tool, and I'm going to create my petals now. I'll just draw some rounded shapes. And of course these aren't perfect, but it's a start. And these are the petals of my flower. Now, I probably want to move them around and arrange them so that they look somewhat different from just randomly placed. And I can also use the arrow keys on my keyboard. Now I want to rotate these petals, and to do that, I can draw a square over them using my selection tool. So all I'm doing is dragging a square room. I can also select them one by one if I hold my shift key down. That's another way as well. If I go to Object, Transform, Rotate, I can change the degree of rotation for them. That's something a little bit different. Another way to rotate these petals is by doing the rotation from the tool panel. So if I click on this, I could come over here and rotate my flowers that way as well. And there we go. Now I don't really want these petals to be black, right? I need some color. It is Purple Cafe. So I can click on a petal using my selection tool and now I can colorize these petals. These are my colors and this is your fill and behind that is your stroke. So what it's saying is that your object is filled with black and there's no stroke color. So if I double click on this black color, I can go in here and choose from this color bar. So I'll just choose kind of a nice purple. Since we're working in print, we're working with CMYK. C is cyan or blue, magenta is red, Y is yellow, and K is black. And this basically says what percentage of each makes up that color purple. You can also look at this hexadecimal number that's made of six characters. I'm going to copy this because I'm going to use it in the next step. I can hit OK, and there's my purple petal. If I want to make all of these purple, I can hold down my shift key and grab them all. I can come over here to the black and paste in my number, and there they're all purple. I'm going to undo Command Z so I can show you another way to make these petals a color. I can click on one of the petals and use my eyedrop tool 
and select the purple and it will change to the purple of that petal. I'll do it for these two. I'll select these petals, I'll use my eyedrop tool, and there again I can select the petals and change the color to them quickly. Now I want to draw a stem underneath the petals of my flower. I'm going to use the line tool to illustrate this. The first thing I like to do is to see what color is selected before I use a tool. And in this case, the black for the stroke is selected. This is kind of the default for lines. I can change the color, however, by just clicking on that black stroke square and using the color picker to pick a choice. So if I wanted to make it green, I could select green. Real quickly, I wanted to talk about this only web colors. If you're designing for the web, some web designers still use these only web colors. This goes back to the day when computers could only show so many colors on its display on both Macs and PCs. We are no longer at that stage anymore. Computers can read multitude of colors. So you can still use this, and some designers still do, because it actually limits your choices of colors, and they like that. Or you can use the color picker. So I'm going to keep my stem black, so I'm going to hit cancel. Now I want to use the line tool to draw the stem on my flower. If I click on the line tool and then click and drag, I can draw a stem for the flower and also change the stroke using my options panel at the top. I'm not really liking the way this looks, so I'm going to delete the line and try a straight line and see if that makes a difference. I'm going to simply grab the line tool, hold down the shift key, and draw a line. That's how you draw straight lines in Illustrator, by holding the shift key down. But I'm not liking this either, so I'm going to delete the stem and go back to the one point, and this time I'm going to use the brush tool, which is also located on the tool panel. I want a more organic feel to the stem, similar to this brush stroke in the cafe. So I'm going to use the brush, and I'm going to draw a stem. Much better. Now I can move my flower closer to my logo. I'm going to go ahead and select the flower and notice when I select it by drawing a square around it. I've actually selected the word cafe as well. To get rid of that selection or to unattach it, I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the word cafe. I now can group the flower, so if I go to object, group, and this keeps all the parts together so I don't accidentally miss a petal and then leave it behind. So I'm going to move this flower closer to the logo. I can do this by simply using my arrow keys and if I use shift arrow it moves it faster. I can also just drag it without holding anything down as well. So I'm going to go ahead and place the flower on my logo. Another thing you want to do when you're designing is kind of anchor elements to elements meaning I'd like the top of this flower to align with the top of the L. So I can click on my ruler and drag another guideline down. There we go. So I'm a little too high, so I'm going to grab my flower, and because I grouped it, I don't have to grab each petal and the stem separately. I can now move my flower down and line it up. And I kind of like that this one pokes up a little bit. And there we go. There is my logo.